Hey guys, I'm Bella, and from last video, Gilbert the Great One, read by Darnell. And for today's video, we have Giraffes Can't Dance, read by Carly, and Dear Mr. Blueberry, read by Lyric. So, enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Cornelius the Cha-Cha Chimp, and Carly is going to be reading about my friend Gerald the Giraffe. Hi, my name is Carly Felice, and I'm going to be reading Giraffes Can Dance by Gil's Andrea. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing, and the rhinos rock and roll. The lions danced a tangle that was elegant and bold. The chips did all, all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons then teamed up with the splendid Scottish wheel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted at the, to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clod. So he crept up from the dance floor as he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing, and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who seen Gerald earlier on, but sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tails were swishing round. He threw his arms out sideways, and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leaped up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was wide open. I am dancing. Yes, I am dancing. I am dancing. Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald buggied on and watched him quite entrance. Mm -hmm. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, let, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow.
Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all condense, he said, when we find music that we love. The end. Hi, I'm Emily, and my good old friend Lyric will be reading a story about the whale in my backyard, Arthur. Hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Lyric, and today we'll be reading Dear Mr. Blueberry by Simon James. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I love whales very much, and I think I saw one in my pond. Please send me some information on whales, as I think he might be hurt. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, here are some details about whales. I don't think you will find it was a whale you saw because whales don't live in ponds, but in salt water. Yours sincerely, your teacher, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I am now putting salt into the pond every day before breakfast, and last night I saw my whale smile. I think he is feeling better. Do you think he might be lost? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't put any more salt in the pond. I'm sure your parents won't be pleased. I'm afraid there can't be a whale in your pond because whales don't get lost. They always know where they are in oceans. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I am very happy because I saw my whale jump up and spurt lots of water. He looked blue. Does this mean he might be a blue whale? Love, Emily. P.S. What can I feed him with? Dear Emily, blue whales are blue and they eat tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the sea. However, I must tell you that a blue whale is much too big to live in your pond. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. P.S. Perhaps it is a blue goldfish? Dear Mr. Blueberry, last night I read your letter to my whale. Afterward, he let me stroke his head. It was very exciting. I secretly took him some crunched up cornflakes and breadcrumbs. This morning I looked in the pond and they were all gone. I think I shall call him Arthur. What do you think? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, I must point out to you quite forcibly, now that in no way could a whale live in your pond. You may not know that whales are migratory, which means they travel great distances each day. I am sorry to disappoint you. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I'm a little sad. Arthur has gone. I think your letter made sense to him, and he has decided to be migratory again. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't be too sad. It really wasn't possible for a whale to live in your pond. Perhaps when you are older, you would like to sail the ocean studying and protecting whales. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, it's been the happiest day. I went to the beach and you'll never guess, but I saw Arthur. I called to him and he smiled. I knew it was Arthur because he let me stroke his head. I gave him some of my sandwich. And then we said goodbye. I shouted that I loved him very much, and I hope you don't mind. I said you loved him too. Love, Emily and Arthur. The end.